The Unitree H1 robot demonstration in China was supposed to be a celebration of technological progress. Instead, it turned into a terrifying spectacle that left the audience scrambling in fear and raised serious questions about robotic safety. During what was intended to be a controlled live showcase of Unitree's humanoid robot, the H1 began behaving erratically on stage, its movements becoming increasingly aggressive and unpredictable. What looked like the beginning of a sci-fi horror scenario was, in fact, a technical failure. A series of software errors triggered by a physical oversight that turned the robot into a nightmare in front of Investigations into the incident revealed a fundamental flaw in the H1's stabilization programming. During the event, engineers had tethered the robot from the head, which is a common safety measure during public demos. But Unitree's software wasn't designed to account for this constraint. So the stabilization algorithm, which is critical for maintaining balance in any bipedal robot, relies on accurate feedback from sensors and assumes full freedom of movement. All right, let me pick you up. Oh, oh. Oh. Okay, okay, all right, relax. When the H1 attempted to correct what it believed were balance issues, the tether resisted its natural motion. The robot's code failing to interpret this resistance correctly ramped up its corrective movements. Small motions turned into sharp jerks. Each failed correction fed into the next, escalating into a violent feedback loop that gave the impression the machine had lost its mind. Unitree later issued a statement blaming the chaos on a program setting or sensor error, a vague but telling admission that sensor data might have been misread. These sensor complications likely exacerbated the feedback loop, confusing the robot about its orientation and leading it to overreact in increasingly dramatic ways. To onlookers, it felt like the robot had broken free of its programming and gone rogue. But from some reports, we have seen robotics experts explain that the situation, even though it was alarming, was not evidence of AI rebellion. It was a just an example of a known problem in robotics, where software designed under ideal lab conditions fails when exposed to real-world variables. But so far, the aftermath of the demo has triggered a wave of reflection across the robotics industry. One of the key lessons is the importance of enhanced testing protocols. Robots, especially humanoid ones designed to operate near people, must be tested under every possible constraint. That includes introducing sensor errors, simulating unexpected physical limitations, and stress testing their ability to respond to unpredictable conditions. These layers of testing are vital to ensuring that when robots do fail, and they will, they fail safely. This incident also highlights the growing emphasis on fail-safe mechanisms. Many robotics companies are now developing advanced emergency shutdown systems that can detect unusual motion patterns and immediately cut motor power. These systems act like digital kill switches and are becoming essential for robots that are expected to interact closely with humans. The goal is not just to prevent failures and ensure that when failures occur, they do so in a controlled, non-threatening manner. One major contrast brought into sharp focus by the Unitree incident is the difference in approach between Chinese robotics companies and their Western counterparts. Western firms like Agility Robotics in the U.S. typically prioritize safety and long-term stability over rapid commercialization. Agility's Digit Robot, for example, has been working in a factory environment for over a year, but strict safety protocols ensure that human workers are never near it during operation. Agility is currently developing what will be the world's first safety-certified humanoid robot, scheduled for release by the end of 2025. This certification means that their robots will be safe to work directly alongside humans without the need for physical safety cages, which is a big milestone in human-robot collaboration. Daniel Diaz, Chief Strategy Officer at Agility Robotics, has stated that the company's mission is to address labor shortages while keeping human safety at the core of every deployment. That vision stands in stark contrast to the model followed by companies like Unitree, where speed to market often outweighs thorough safety testing. Chinese robot manufacturers are known for pushing their products out quickly to dominate market share, sometimes releasing robots that aren't fully refined. This model allows for fast technological iteration and helps fund ongoing development, but it comes at a cost, safety and reliability. Buyers may find themselves owning a half-baked product, only to see a much improved version released a few months later at the same price, forcing them to reinvest if they want access to the latest features. This approach also exposes users to real risks. Robots like the H1 weigh upwards of 45 kilograms. If such a machine loses balance or malfunctions near a child or even an adult, the consequences could be severe. That's why the concept of graceful failure is now more important than ever in robotics design. When robots break down, they must do so in ways that are safe 
predictable, and manageable. Not in a frenzy of panicked flailing. The Unitree H1 demo was a powerful and shocking reminder that we're still very much in the early days of humanoid robotics, and that safety must evolve hand-in-hand -hand with innovation. While Unitree has since updated the software and added fixes to prevent this kind of error in the future, the memory of that robot spinning out of control in front of a terrified crowd won't fade anytime soon. Listen to this case that happened in the robot marathon in China, and you will understand why Unitree has still a long way to go. Performance was rough because out of 21 robots that took part in the event, only six finished. And the Unitree robot's performance was sluggish, awkward, and nowhere near what we've been shown in the slick, futuristic demo videos that Unitree regularly releases. It struggled hard and even fell down at the start. Like for me, this wasn't the fluid, Kung Fu Master, backflipping robot we've seen in Unitree's carefully edited demos. It was bad, and by bad I mean really bad. Which raises the obvious question, are those Unitree demo videos just heavily edited marketing fluff, or is there a different reason behind this huge performance gap? Unitree actually responded to the backlash and offered their explanation, which I'll get to in just a moment. It's clear that Unitree has been pushing out a huge number of updates in the past few months. Some customers who bought their robots earlier might be wondering where all these new features are because it's not guaranteed they've received them. We know for a fact that Unitree has started rolling out over-the-air updates, and now some of the robots can talk, walk more smoothly, and even interact in ways that were unheard of a year ago. Let's get this party started. I'll play a song and do a little dance for you. We finally arrived and we finally have ourselves our very first update for the Unitree G1. But judging from what we saw in that marathon event, it seems like the running upgrade or marathon ready update hasn't rolled out to everyone. Or maybe it just doesn't work well in real world conditions. Unitree in their defense stated that the company didn't actually send a team to the marathon. They claim they've been too busy lately and clarified that anyone who owns a Unitree robot is free to deploy it in any activity, but the results will vary based on how the robot is trained. That to me is sounds like a diplomatic way of saying, don't blame us if our robots fail, you didn't train them right. But I also think that their explanation kind of makes sense, but it also highlights a much deeper issue with how Unitree is rolling out their products to the public. One of the most frustrating things about Unitree right now is their decision to commercialize these robots before they were market ready. If you spent thousands of dollars buying one of their robots last year when some of them were essentially glorified toys, you might be stuck with an outdated version that maybe can't access the latest advancements like running. Or maybe you got a version that doesn't have enough degrees of freedom to KO your enemy. Because even as of now, what is more confusing is that Unitree hasn't made it clear whether the new models we see in those demo videos, the ones doing kung fu and walking like movie characters, are even available for purchase yet. So you will buy a Unitree robot thinking that it can run, play soccer, or it's a kung fu expert, but it turns to be an older model that was just hanging it in the dealer's warehouse. Then later you get mad at how it can't do anything close to what they advertise in their demos. It also doesn't help that Unitree seems to be running multiple iterations of the same robot model. For example, their most advanced version of the G1 robot costs around five times more than the $16,000 version that many early adopters bought. So there's a strong chance that someone bought the cheaper model, assumed it was capable of marathon-level performance, and ended up being part of this public embarrassment. Again, Unitree has a special robot that is meant for sports. It's called the G1 Comp. So sometimes when you buy from them, you need to know specifically what you want. Because as far as we know on this channel, the $16,000 version is not that advanced. In order for it to stand, you need to place it in a certain position. If anything is misaligned, it won't wake up. Then it just follows pre-programmed commands to move to the right, left, etc., and a few other functions like waving but its hands or fingers are stiff, so it won't shake your hand unless you add some more money to buy a more advanced version. The marathon exposed a harsh truth that if you bought a Unit Re robot today, maybe it won't come with those latest updates. But Unitree's tech is advancing so fast, and they will be the leaders of robotics pretty soon. But buyers beware for now. You might pay premium prices for a robot that doesn't come with new features. Maybe try to inquire more from the dealer you're buying from and also be more aware which iteration you are buying. 